One thing is for certain, you do not need to be the body language ghost to understand the body language in this video. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this video of Ivanka Trump snubbing Jim Acosta is body language reading gold. And when I say that you don't need to be the body language ghost, for those of you who don't know who the body language ghost is, she has a wonderful body language reading channel. Uh, is Barney's face distracting any of you? Okay, this is a very timely video because depending on when you watch this video, I will either be doing a live stream with the Body Language Ghost tomorrow or I will have done a live stream with the Body Language Ghost whenever in the past, depending on when you're watching this video in the future. By the way, what does the future look like? If you want to catch that live stream because it is going to be fascinating, I'm going to link it right here. This video of Ivanka Trump snubbing Jim Acosta, which recently went viral, I've said this before and I'll say it again, when a video goes viral, generally speaking, it's because it's tapped into something that is fundamentally human. It's because it's tapped into or exposed something that is fundamental to the universal human condition. Joy, fear, anger, wonder. Go through this mental exercise on a going forward basis with every video that you see that goes viral. There is a reason why some videos go viral and others don't, and generally speaking, it's because the viral ones have tapped into something universal that all humans can relate to in one way or another when viewing it. And this video of Ivanka Trump snubbing Jim Acosta is no different. Now I've got to say I was a little reluctant to do this video because I don't want to come off as kicking Jim Acosta when he's down. And I don't want to blow this event out of proportion or give it a meaning that it doesn't have. These are grown adults and they will move on with their lives, but there is an expression that to humiliate someone in public is to kill them. I don't agree with public humiliation or public mockery. I have an expression that you compliment in public and criticize in private. Even if I don't like someone, even if I loathe them, I would sooner say nothing than make fun of them. And and for those of you who are thinking, what about your videos where you call out Legal Eagle on his bias? I think that grown adults who put themselves out there can deal with criticism. There is a not so fine line between criticism and mockery, and it's a line that gets trampled all too often in social media. When I saw this video of Ivanka Trump and I saw the look of soul crushing defeat in the eyes of Jim Acosta, it didn't only bring back memories of high school for me, it brought back one distinct memory from my practice of law. And I'm going to share that with you after we walk through this video and break down all of the body language that's going on in this video. Okay. Your thoughts? Any comment on your father's impeachment trial? I think there should be witnesses. I am always one to give someone the benefit of the doubt until proof to the contrary. And when I first watched this video, I said, maybe it's possible that Ivanka Trump was just so in her head that she didn't even see Jim Acosta there to begin with. And while that may be a plausible hypothesis, based on Ivanka's body language, I think it's pretty clear this was a deliberate snub. She clearly saw and recognized the existence of Jim Acosta getting in her face with the mic. So much so that if you look at her left hand, you'll notice that she actually raises it to create some sort of a barrier between her and Jim. <laughs> And then she proceeds to utterly ignore Jim Acosta's very existence. One question I asked myself when I first saw this video is why is it only Jim Acosta who is there? There seems to be two cameramen, the one on the left of Jim Acosta and the one recording. But there are no other reporters approaching Ivanka Trump for questions. And I think it's possible that Jim Acosta may have left the designated area for reporters where reporters are supposed to ask their questions in order to pursue Ivanka Trump, which might explain her reaction. But regardless of the lead up, look at Jim Acosta's face when he is utterly ignored. I can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now! Within the short period of 15 seconds, Jim Acosta goes from big time national reporter to totally invisible. From a chest that is pumped up with pride to a back that is slouched over in shame. And why? Because he was utterly ignored. His very existence, his very identity at that moment in time was utterly denied. Which brings me to a wonderful anecdote from my practice as an attorney. I was involved in some litigation file. The details of the file are utterly irrelevant. The only relevant detail is that we were heading into examinations, depositions, discoveries, whatever you call them. I am at most 35 years old at the time and I'm heading into a deposition that is being conducted by one of the most prominent litigators in the province, if not the country. And when I say prominent, I mean prominent. I mean prominent and intimidating. Not physically intimidating. Very rarely in the practice of law is size a relevant factor. Intimidating in terms of reputation, intellect, and demeanor. So we head into deposition. It is this lawyer's deposition, meaning that he's the one asking the questions and I'm pretty much there just to object. But even though I'm only there to object, I am there also to make my presence known and to exude the confidence that my client needs me to exude in the context of a discovery. I need to go in there and 
metaphorically flex my muscles a bit so that my client feels assured that they are not going to get trampled by an aggressive opposing counsel. And so we sit down, everybody straightens their ties, sits up tall, puffs up their chest, and we start the deposition. And right off the bat, because we are two alpha lawyers each trying to intimidate and impose our dominance on the other, this lawyer starts asking very aggressive questions. And I puff up my chest and I say, object, you're not going to get away with this type of behavior during the examination. The lawyer doesn't even look at me. The lawyer doesn't even recognize my existence and just asks the exact same question again. And then I puff up my chest even more and I say, how dare you ignore me? You're not going to ask the same question. I just objected to that question. The lawyer totally ignores me and asks the same question again. Within one minute of this deposition beginning, my existence in that room was totally denied. It was soul crushing and absolutely effective. Now, when I say it was effective, it doesn't mean that I let the lawyer ask the questions and was intimidated into letting my client answer. It was effective in that it changed my demeanor by letting me know that my demeanor was going to have absolutely no impact on this lawyer. Winston Churchill once said that you will never get to your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. To this lawyer who had a clear destination, I was merely a barking dog. And by totally and utterly ignoring me, he let me know as much. My barking wasn't going to phase him, it wasn't going to intimidate him, it wasn't going to change his conduct one bit. To some extent, it had an impact on my behavior because instead of fighting throughout the examination, I just said objection and we should move on. But it pacified me for the purposes of the examination. Other younger, more immature, less competent attorneys would have started fighting with me and that would have gotten nowhere for anybody. They would have stopped to throw stones at every barking dog and in so doing would not have gotten to their destination, which would have been the ultimate purpose of that deposition. And now bringing this all back to how Ivanka Trump dealt with Jim Acosta. Absolute total dismissal, but a blip on her journey to her destination. And you could see the absolute deflating effect it had on Jim Acosta. He knew right away he wasn't going to get anything out of this. No point chasing, no point getting more aggressive, no point getting closer with the mic, just slink off, you're not going to go anywhere at that particular point in time. And it really is a perfect example of how to avoid conflict and how to avoid escalation. Ivanka Trump could have pulled a Martha McSally and called Jim Acosta a liberal hack. Senator McSally, should the Senate consider new evidence as part of the impeachment trial? Man, are you a liberal hack? I'm not talking to you. But other than that, being out of character from what we seem to know of Ivanka Trump, that wouldn't have even accomplished the same goal. To react so aggressively or defensively because sometimes these two behaviors manifest themselves in the same conduct, itself validates the reporter's existence. While a lot of people agree with what Martha McSally said, you know that a bunch of other people are going to use it against her. You know that some reporters, and specifically the reporter in question, are going to use that as a badge of honor. Look how important I am. I actually triggered her into saying this, and now I'm going to use it as a soundbite for the next week. Ivanka's reaction absolutely does not play into that game. And ironically enough, in not playing into that game, that's why it's all the more soul-crushing. In the heart of Jim Acosta, he's now looking at Ivanka Trump and saying to himself, in the eyes of Ivanka Trump, I'm not even worth being called a liberal hack. I am not even important enough to her to trigger a reaction out of her. And that is exactly how I felt in the context of that deposition with that senior lawyer, and it's a lesson I learned from him. It's not really a lesson I like or have employed very much, because I don't like making people feel insignificant. But I nonetheless understood and appreciated the lesson that he taught me. So that is it, how to draw life lessons out of a 15 second clip. And incidentally, if you like my videos and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notifications when my videos are posted. If you want to support the channel and I'm really not all that good at asking but if you do the support links are in the pinned comment. There is a PayPal option for anybody who feels so inclined and if you want to watch one of my older body language reading videos I'm going to link one right here and now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah.